over how to do your um, first assignment um, where you're going to be learning how to do kerning or the space in between letters by hand. So what you're going to need is your layout bond material which should be in your um, supply packets and uh, you're going to need your ruler, some scissors, your tape, and your micron pens and a pencil and eraser would also be helpful. Okay, um, additionally, you're going to need this uh, printed 11 by 17 sheet. Um, I've provided templates for you guys. Um, you should have been or assigned a typeface in class, but if you haven't, um, go on the website and uh, download. You'll probably see this page, and so you can choose either Helvetica Noia or Bempo. You only have to do one of these. So if it makes it easier for you, um, as the students who came to class will see, you can just cut this in half. You really only need half of it because you're only going to be kerning one typeface. So I picked Bembo for mine. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to construct a simple uh, sentence um, and figuring out the spacing in between the letters yourself. So I would start by taking your sheet of layout bond and drawing a baseline for yourself. So the first thing you're going to need to do is um, take your sheet of layout bond and measure it and it measures at about nine inches. So half of nine inches is four and a half inches. So I go at four and a half inches and make a mark on one side and then I flip it over and I do four and a half inches on the other side. And then really lightly with my pencil, um, because we're gonna wanna erase this later, I'm gonna go from one of those marks to the other, straight halfway line across my sheet of paper. Now, the sentence that you're gonna be kerning yourself is uh, written on the bottom of these printouts. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And the reason why we do the sentence is because it actually uses every single letter in the alphabet, and so it gives you a chance to really think about the kerning uh, in every letter that's presented to us. Um, so with the, the type family at this size, um, you're going to need more than this one piece of layout bond. So what you're going to do, um, and maybe what you want to start out doing, is just add another sheet of paper um, right away. And so you're going to measure that and continue your baseline across that and just line those up and you're going to take your tape and tape along the back. So when you're done you're going to have just like a long maybe like two to three sheets of paper with your sentence going across. So don't go down to the next line or anything just keep connecting pieces of paper. Okay. So for the sake of time, I'll just explain that to you guys. I'm not going to show it to you yet. We're just going to get started on how you can current this sentence. So now I have my baseline drawn. How do I start to think about these things? So we'll talk about what are important keys um, in kerning. Um, but one way that I was told to think about it is uh, pouring a jar of marbles um, over the top of the letter forms and having the same amount of marbles in between each letter form. So there's going to be different rules depending on if you're lining up the letter L next to a letter O because of the way the O curves it's going to leave more of an open space here rather than this M that's flush right next to it. These two straight lines make a smaller space and so that's going to make your decision different depending on how close you want them to sit next to each other. You really just want it to be a clean, easy reading with no big gaps between things. So even just, this is just the alphabet, you know, out here, but this feel, this M, N, O, P is out really wide. You know, they're all pretty wide letters and this O really has a lot of space between the N and a lot of space between the P. And then you come down here to this part of the alphabet Q, R, S, T, and it all feels really tight. And that's because these letters are really tight. And so what do we do? Um, especially, oh, here's another good V, W, X, also really wide letters. And so here we have three letters, R, S, T, and three letters, V, W, X, and this feels really wide and this feels really tight. 
So how do we find a balance of how much can we increase more space in here or make them a little tighter to each other so that they have the same feel and cadence as those letters? So we'll talk about this more in class, but basically your exercise is gonna go as this. So the first, uh, the first word in my sentence is the, and you wanna make sure you're using a capital T, which I included in all the alphabets for you. And I wouldn't start it, so you're gonna take your layout bond, which is slightly see-through, and so you'll be able to see the alphabet. If you can't see it real well, I would suggest using a light box, which we have available um, on campus, or just holding it up to the window. And I wouldn't start your letter, you know, right at the beginning of the paper. I would give yourself, you know, like an inch, inch and a half margin around here so that, you know, we have a little bit of space. And just want to make sure you guys can see this in the video, but so what I'm doing is I'm lining up the T with the bottom of my baseline, okay? Because I want to make sure that this is straight. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil first and I'm going to very carefully trace this letter form on the baseline and you want to try and make it as accurate as possible. Okay, really paying attention to what is it about Bembo that makes its letters uh, unique and that's something you're going to be a lot more acquainted with by the time you're done doing this. Okay, so now I have my letter T on there. So that's in there and what I would do now is I actually fill it in with one of my micron pens um, it can be hard, I think, uh, to determine kerning, kerning when you're only looking at outlines of letters in pencil. I think it's helpful for them to have more of a solid base to them. Um, so I'm going to start with my eight because it's um, it's a bigger it's a bigger size, and I'm going to just really carefully color in this letter. Just being careful to pick up all the specific attributes that Bembo itself or whatever typeface you chose uh, shows. So if it has feet on the legs, make sure that you're drawing the feet in. You're paying particular attention to how the curves move on each serif. And as you move through the letter forms, you'll start to see commonalities between them. So now I have the letter T out there and I'm ready to figure out the placement of my letter H because right the first sentence the first sentence is the quick brown fox so we're gonna do the, the sorry the first word is the so I have the capital T so now I want to put in um, the H in there so again I want to make sure you guys can see this but I'm you know I'm holding it over and you can kind of see the H underneath there already so I'm sort of trying to line it up on the baseline and how much space do I want to give it and I want it to be kind of tight um, because it actually could be a ligature which we'll get into later about um, letters that connect with each other at the top but there's all this open space in between how the T comes in here and then this flat line so if I give it too much space it's gonna feel too open there so I actually want it to be kinda of tight so I wouldn't, I wouldn't make the letters touch, but um, I would allow them to be, get pretty close to each other. Okay, so again, I'm going to outline it with my pencil first. Alright, so I'm filling it in with my pen, and I'm doing this because I'm going to have a much easier time understanding its weight on the page and understanding its relationship with the letter next to it if it's filled in. I make some mistakes at this point. Okay, so now I have my TH. I feel pretty happy with that uh, spacing. I may have wanted to make it just a little bit closer, but um, I'm gonna move on to my E since this is you know, just my first try. Okay, so um, you can see, uh, again, so you can see here, the TH and I want it to be, it feels kind of far away from the E when I do it here but I want to make it just a little bit closer so they feel like a pair. I want to make sure I'm lining up my baseline. You know I have all of this open space here 
I'm not going to have that much open space between that and the letter H, which be, can, can be confusing with the, with the marble rule that I gave you, but you kind of have to, it's also just sort of an intuition, um, just sort of, you'll get a hang of what looks right and what doesn't. Um, so I'm going to, I think I want my E just a little tight, but to visually feel the same distance here and there. So there's no measuring. It's just kind of having a feeling for it. And that's what I want you guys to practice with this. Okay, so again, pencil outline this. So little tip for people who are trying to blow through this project. The spacing that I provided in the alphabet is not correct. It has purposely been altered. So you need to figure out the spacing yourself. Do not copy the spacing that's been provided for you. It will not work out very well. Um, after I finish this E, you're going to have to make a decision. We have a new word coming up, and you're going to also have to figure out that spacing. How much should words be spaced away from each other? Um, there's different theories on this, but I would recommend trying the width of a letter N. Um, if that feels too tight, try the width of a letter M and see how that feels. You know, there's not necessarily any absolute rights and wrongs in typography, but there is being able to explain your rationale. And that's where I want you guys to be, is be able to understand your design. Alright, so I'm quickly just finishing up this E. Um, I've got my the. Alright, so, um, sorry, the video cut off again. Um, I finished the E, so I have my sentence, the, uh, constructed out in a spacing that I feel comfortable with. Um, and next what I'm going to do is, now I'm moving on to the next word, and I want to move over to quick. And so how do I know how close I put that, um, the, the next word. And so I would suggest um, using something that we call an N space, um, which is actually the width of a letter M. You've also heard like N, N dash, E N dash, and E M, and M dash. And those are actually just the width of an M and an N. Um, and on the letterpress, you'll see a little bit more why we use that type of measurement. Um, but I think it's a good uh, way to sort of get started. So. Um, I will take my E and kind of line it up exactly with the N there and I'll probably make like a little um, like a pencil mark um, where that is uh, just real lightly and um, you can do it right up against the line of the N and see what happens when I start my new um, word right there so, um, it is the quick brown box. So, the next uh, letter is Q. So, I get my baseline lined up. And just uh, sort of uh, for your information, um, letters that have a flat bottom, like a T and an H, will line up directly with your baseline, whereas rounder letters like an E will sit just below the baseline, just a little bit, um, just so that they visually sit a little bit more comfortably. So now we're looking at trying to line up our Q on the baseline, um, and it may sit just, just below the baseline, uh, the curve of that Q. So I also have it aligned with the N space, and I feel pretty comfortable with that. So I'm going to go ahead and... Now, maybe the Q, the N space doesn't work for your typeface. Like, you don't think it looks right and you have to adjust it a little bit. That's fine, but I think um, it's a good place to start. So I'm going to go in and fill this in and start um, kerning the rest of my sentence. Remember, when you run out of space on the sheet, you want to get another piece from your layout bond and just tape it and make sure you measure out to continue your baseline. So you're just going to have a long, uh, maybe three page sheet of this. When you're done, 
erase all of your pencil marks and don't forget to put your name on it so that I know whose it is and uh, you'll hand it in.